Hello. Hola, mi gente. ¿Qué pasa? Mr. Mario aquí with uh, Conversations with Mr. Mario. And today's guest comes from very far. She's like Miss International. This is Evangelina Chavez. She's originally from Mexico City, lived in Australia. If you want to find, because she's always traveling, you can find her online, on Facebook specifically. It's Evangelina Chavez. Let's get that up there for you. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen, before we bring her out. There it is right there. You can find her on Facebook, Evangelina Chavez V. She, she's amazing, okay? She studied international relations at the super famous Tech de Monterrey. It's like the Harvard of Mexico, okay? Uh, and then she didn't stop there. She's like, no, no, I, I want to keep studying. Uh, she went and got her master's of political economy in uh, at the University of Sydney. She's a real estate investor in three different countries, not three states, not three cities, but three different countries. Um, her aunt thinks like Demi Moore looks like her. Her superpower is understanding legal details. Thank God, in three different countries, she's better know what's really going on. Um, she wants to have and create a beautiful family that travels and learns in non-methodical ways. So with all this success, Miss Evangelina, why are you still single? I don't know. <laughs> oh, God, here we go. <laughs> no, she knows, she knows all about the legal details, but doesn't know why she's single. Well, no, actually, I think that um, the reason I'm still single is I'm looking for someone who wants to have a crazy life like I do. I look for someone who wants to travel and learn and do different things. And I met some guys who are happy to settle down somewhere, have a cozy job, and and that's it. And I want more. I love how you say cozy, by the way. <laughs> I, out of all that, I heard I love cozy job. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. So well, we did say that in the introduction that you want to, you want to travel, learn, and live this non-methodical life, right? Yes. Um, you said you live a crazy life. Well, give us a little more because there are a lot of people who like to travel, but I'm thinking like, what is it more? Like, what, like tell us more about what, 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 what this crazy traveling life looks like to you. Well, uh, Mario, I'm a plat with Tony Robbins and like he has courses about self-development. So suddenly you have mm -hmm. to be in Hawaii and you have to be in the U S and I actually love to have like my life in Australia, to live in Australia with a beautiful house and a dog. And I also want to visit my family in Mexico. So there's a lot of traveling. Right. And I think it can be done with children. Um, we just need someone with a big, big vision. Okay. You said a lot of things that I hope they heard. First thing was that you're a plat with Tony Robbins. Uh, what does that mean? Well, that means that I get to go to all Tony Robbins events. I don't have to go to all of them but I'm invited okay. to go to, to the event. And like how, and many, how many is that a year? Uh, I believe he has about two per month, something like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's like, if you, so, so basically the guy you're looking for, because you want him to travel with you, right? So that's about 24 trips a year. It's, well, I'll be okay with 16. <laughs> oh, okay, we can cut out the other eight. And then you said, so you're, you're Platt with Tony Robbins. Um, I'm a fellow Platt, so hello. That's how we know each other. I, know I just wanted to explain that. Um, and you're right, we don't have to go to all of them, but it is so much fun to go to them. Why do you like going to Tony Robbins events? Well, it sort of takes your life to another level. You also get to meet very mm -hmm. interesting people like like you. Um, and you, you get to... Um, you learn a lot, not only for your business, but also for your mm. spiritual, making a difference. It's just, it's just something different. Like, yeah, I guess take your life to another level. Okay. Take it. Got it. Take it to another level. Now, see, here's the things that happen, right? So you're looking for this man. I like to travel. And you said you have a dog. That sometimes matters to people. Like what if you, you got to find a guy who loves dogs, right? Yes, um, I do. I'm okay. in love with my what dog. What kind of dog right do you now. have? Well, he's a Labrador. Okay. All right. So you got to find a guy who loves to travel, loves dogs, and is cool with big dogs. Yeah, I will. Does your I dog mean, travel? Do you, do you travel with your dog to all the Tony Robbins events? No, no. He he definitely couldn't go. Um, okay, which I was going to say, yeah, that's a big okay. dog to be traveling around with you. Yeah. Okay. Where do you where so where do you where do you spend more time? Because I know that you, you said in your intro that uh, you're, you're from Mexico City, but you lived in Sydney. You went and got your master's degree there. Um, where are you now? I'm in Mexico City at the moment, but I usually spend more time in Australia. Got it. Okay. Would you? So if you're spending more time in Australia, 
because I'm trying to figure like, well, what, like the answer, the question was why are you still single, but you're all, you're, you're traveling around a lot. You need a guy who's able to, to do all these travels. Right. And, yeah. um, do you have a preference? Like, let's just say, cause you're in Mexico right now. Let's say you dream guy in Mexico. Does he have to, what if he doesn't want to move to Australia? Are you willing to stay in Mexico? Yes. I think for the right guy, I'll be willing to move almost anywhere, anywhere in the world. Like if it makes sense, like if I met a guy who is like, okay, I have this amazing business in Portugal and it makes sense for both of us to stay in Portugal. Um, I could adapt that's to that. Wow. That's amazing. So you could, you could literally live anywhere you want, you want to be. Yes. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> Do you know, wait, are you using any, um, any, any dating apps? Yes, I'm in eHarmony and Bumble. Which one do you like better? I think eHarmony is really, really good. It's amazing. You get to really connect with the person you, mm-hmm. since the beginning, you know whether you're a match or you're not, so you don't waste your time. Uh, I think it's a better app. It's also like with eHarmony, you get to speak to people. It doesn't matter where in the world they are. Um, they, really? they, they match you based on your way of thinking. Um, Bumble is just cute guys who live around. Okay, so basically, like, <laughs> so wait, so so you took more time, obviously, with eHarmony application you did for the Bumble one, um, and you said you can do it from around the world. So are you swipe? Like, I'm assuming it's the same thing. Are you swiping? I don't, I don't know eHarmony at all. Do you swipe? How does that work? No, no, no. So eHarmony is really, really smart. I actually, there's a book actually that it talks about falling in love for the right reasons. Um, okay where the the app will see based on the person the, like they will ask you a questionnaire you fill in the questionnaire and then every mm-hmm. time you see someone that starts speaking to you or you start speaking to him you get to see where you are compatible and where you're not and then you like if ha- the compatibility is high and you like the picture then you start talking to the person and then if not then you don't how many questions is this questionnaire um, I don't know how many questions, but it takes almost half an hour to fill it in. I guess oh, if you're serious yeah. about wanting to raise a family and meet your partner to half an hour is a small amount of time to invest in uh, finding your partner, huh? Yeah. And also like the, the app is expensive. So you know that. That's my, that was my next question. How much is it? I have no clue. Uh, how much was it? Um, ooh. I think I pay $131 for the first three months, but it's a minimum of six months commitment. So okay. it's something between so, so 100, 131. So it's like uh, close to 40 bucks, a little more than 40 bucks a month. Yeah, but you have to, um, you cannot join in for less than six months. Okay. So you're, you're, we're looking at 13260. Okay. So it's a $260 investment for six months to potentially find your life partner. And how have you been doing it for a long time? Did you just start? Uh, about the month. Oh, good. This is new. How's it going? <laughs> good, good. I, I was speaking to, I like, look, the guys that I've spoken to are really, really smart. Um, I love the they guys. Better be. they, they have to, they, they've got to match your master's degree and your, uh, your, your degree from <laughs> Tech de Monterrey, the Harvard of Mexico. I had, I had no clue. <laughs> Now I know. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so so they're like- smart guys. It's, that seems to me that, because, you know, you, it kind of leads me to like um, a, a question I'm really interested in knowing, like what are the characteristics that you're looking for in a guy? And I'm assuming to be a smart guy is one. Yes. Actually, um, I feel attracted to guys who are smarter than me. And um, I, I do think that. Okay. Sorry. No, no, I'm just saying that's a high bar with your master's and, you know, your international degree. But, hey, it's out there. Yeah, I, I, I like guys who are smarter than me that have something, have things to show me in life. But I think part of the reason I'm still single is because even though I feel attracted to them, there's part of me who also wants to compete with them. So, um, mm, I've been doing- that's, you know what? I appreciate that's honest. Most people, most people will not turn their fingers on themselves and say that they, like, there's something about them. That's why they're not with somebody, but, uh, that's awesome way to be vulnerable and, and put it out there. Yeah. Well, I've done a lot of self-development work and the problem seems to be that I had a very overbearing father and mm. I tend to feel attracted to really strong men like my father 
but I mm -hmm. also want to protect myself from this man the way that I try to protect from my protect myself from my father. Well, interesting. Wait, you wait. So you had to protect yourself from your father. That's with like uh, I don't understand. Was it like a, a abusive or like what do you mean you had to protect yourself against your father? He was very very strong and had um he he didn't handle his anger management really well. He he will yell and you know starts getting very angry, and mm -hmm. and so everybody will hide like not only me <laughs> anybody will hide whenever okay. my father was angry um so i think that it, well it's based on the self-development that i've done the problem is that well i feel attracted to men that are like my father i also want to show them that they cannot control me the way that i try to show my father that he couldn't control me got it got it and so you think that's the reason why you you've been single and you've acknowledged that so what are you doing now? What are some changes that you made in your life so well, you, you can overcome that? Um, I'm focusing on my feminine energy. I am I'm doing therapy, different kind of therapies, so I can be more more vulnerable and mm -hmm. you know let go of my walls and understand oh, yeah. that whenever a guy wants to you know tell me what to do, he's trying to contribute to me instead of trying to control me. Holy smokes, like you're so advanced on this, like what you're saying right now. You don't usually hear women talking about it. You got to back up a little bit. You, may, you mentioned feminine energy, which makes me think that there's also this thing as a masculine energy, right? You got to have, you can't have one without the other. So um, can you can you talk about that a little bit, a little bit more? Because you, you just mentioned uh, your, your feminine energy. Can, can you elaborate on that? Well, yeah, like feminine energy, um, think of, is it, there is very different to what most people think of. It's like, oh, you know, women have to wear makeup and, you know, men have to play sports. It's not like that. Um, masculine energy wants to protect women. That is the way that they want to be. Like, that's their nature. And feminine energy want to be protected. They want to feel that protection. And they want to take care of their uh, males in a different way. So it's a little bit like your right. mother taking care of yourself without the actual trying to control you what tell you what to do um or or a girlfriend taking care of you know her boyfriend you know making him soup or something like that if he's sick so that dynamic in our current society is broken because women uh we've been taught that if we allow men to pay for our dinner then it shows that we are not powerful you know and that's actually okay. it, it doesn't it, it doesn't matter who pays the dinner for but men want to contribute to you and that may be like them paying for dinner you know and right right being feminine energy is for allowing them to pay for your dinner it doesn't mean that you are worthless or you don't have money of course you have money you can you can make a lot of money and still get the guy to pay for the dinner that's very true you know I, that's a good point. I um I used to have a, there was a, years ago I used to have a girlfriend and she was a very wealthy woman and you make me think about this now like why you know one of the things that work is you know um she would let me pay for let, let, let me pay for the dinner you know and and I think I, I I also wanted to I remember thinking that one time we went out and it was and um I mean I she had, she says wait wait my money and I did. And then I was like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pay for it. And I'm not on this. I didn't, I wasn't educated on feminine energy, masculine energy, but she had no problem with that. She's like, sure. No problem. You know, but she wasn't like, no, I make more. I'm going to pay. Um, that's interesting. So men, you're saying the masculine energy wants to protect, right? Yeah. And, and, and what is the, what is the uh, feminine energy want? Well, we actually want to be protected and, Strong women like me sometimes don't allow men to protect us. That's what that and, and that's where the, the, the conflict happens. Got it. Because yep. the feminine energy wants to be protected, the masculine energy wants to protect, which is perfect synergy, right? Like this is great. I want to do this and you want to receive it. Beautiful. We should get along very well. But what's happened what, what what I'm understanding is that you were you were more in your masculine energy because you've you've studied, you've got you know, you've got your message, you've got your real estate investor in many countries, you speak multiple languages, you travel. So doing all that, you think, puts you into a, a masculine energy? 
Yes, well, sometimes, um, I mean, I can do everything that I'm doing with feminine energy, okay. and I'm not conscious about it, but sometimes I am. Like, I used to have this boyfriend, and this sounds really, really stupid, but I used to live with this boyfriend in Australia, and he, um, whenever I, I put the clothes um, to be dried, like, in Australia is really yes. hot, so, so you, don't, you don't need a dryer, you just need to put it on the sun for like an hour, and that's it. Perfect. Saving money right there. Let's go. So I used to put it in a way that I, I thought it was really convenient. And he wanted me to do it in a different way that it, it, it took twice as much of time to do it. There was absolutely no benefit whatsoever. Got so it. I just said, my, my, my way of doing it is better. And I just did it my way. And my way was smarter. However, I didn't see in that moment that I was basically telling him, you're stupid, I'm smarted, I'm going to do it my way. You know, and that was a slap on his face. Right, wow. Okay, and that's, that's one reason why it wouldn't work because he wasn't he, he wasn't being listened to. He wasn't providing with the right, he wasn't providing, uh, I guess the right solution to the problem. Okay, yeah, that's some yeah. sort of thing. And it's very, very interesting because, um, you know, what happens a lot, a lot of times with m women like, like me, like I, I used to make more money than him, you know, that kind of stuff. We broke mm -hmm. up, he started dating with, um, and I was a little bit older than like a couple of years older than him. We broke up and then he started dating somebody younger who made less money. And this is what usually happens, how strong women feel like, oh, oh my God, I have to pick between being really smart and strong or having the man of my life. That's not true. But that's yeah. how we feel when this kind of stuff happens. Interesting. How long? Um, I know you've made the change, right? You know, that was really nice, like a little education. And I'm sure you can go in for like and talk for an hour about masculine and feminine energy. Um, but I wanted, wanted to definitely bring it back to you because it, it, it's about you and understanding like what are the change? Like, what are you doing now? My question was, why are you still single? But it seems like you've made some changes. You know, you just got onto eHarmony. You said you you're some really smart guys on there. But how long have you been single? Um, I finished my last relationship about almost a year ago. Okay, so a year, and in this past year, like what, what was like? Were you just not meeting guys, or what, what was happening this past year? Because this is something that you want. You know, you want to have a family. You want to travel. You want to learn non-methodical ways, and you obviously know how to get what you want in life. I mean, your your track record shows it, right? You know, you don't you don't you don't go off and become a real estate investor in not just one country, but not two, but three countries, and get these extensive degrees in multiple countries. Like you're obviously very accomplished, and there's this one area in your life that you're going to succeed in. So I'm really curious to know, like you've been single for the past year. What has happened in this past year for you? Um, I've been dating people. Uh, actually, people all over the world, I've been dating them. Um, okay. Well, I just, I feel Are these long distance relationships? I, sorry? Because you're dating uh, people around the world. Is this long distance relationships or are you staying in a country for a while? Like, How's that working out? Well, um, I mean, having some dates here and there. Um, Got it. Because I was doing Tony Robbins events. I met some people from the U.S. Um, but nothing has actually, um, yeah, no, nothing has come up af after that, after a couple of months, a couple of dates. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I didn't think any of the guys that I was dating was right for me. Okay, good. I mean, we, we well, you don't look like the type of person or the type of person who would settle. So uh, I guess that's good. You know, not you next. You know what I mean? Yeah, and and I understand that it is whatever. Like I'm attracting certain kind of people, right? So I'm really, really working on myself mm -hmm. to attract the right guy. Being the right person. What's that right guy look right like? Guy. Got um, it. Okay, so being being the right person to attract that guy. I'm totally on the same page with you. So who do you have to become to attract the guy you want? I think you have to be more vulnerable and opened. Um, and just allow myself to be taken care of. Okay. 
is this certain like the characteristics of this guy, right? Because people be watching this interview, they're gonna look at you and be like, "Oh, I mean, there's obviously a, a, a bunch of things, like reasons why they, someone would be attracted to you." But they want to know, well, what are you looking for? Because you know, is there is there certain characteristics that you're looking for in somebody? Is there like I like to always say, like, there's obviously things outside and inside, you know. And obviously, we I can't like just by looking at you, I could say that yeah, Demi Moore looks like you, but I I don't know that you've got <laughs> I don't know that you have all these expensive degrees. Right, it just because you don't you don't wear that 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 banner on your head, you know what I mean. I don't know that you speak multiple languages, so those things take time, right? So there's outside and inside the person. What are some of the characteristics? How about this? What are the three characteristics on the outside and three characteristics on the inside that you're looking for? Okay, so I like someone who is tall, uh, or at least taller than me. I tall, am... like what seven seven feet? No, I think six feet six six. Anything above above six feet should be all right. How tall are you? Uh, oh, 170 in centimeters. I think Let's look that up. Hold on one second. I don't know how many feet that is. I'm not, I'm not uh, well-versed on that. But I do have a phone that will help me out with that. Converter and length. Here we go. You said 170 oh. centimeters? One point. Okay, you're 5'5". 5'5". Five five, almost five six. Yeah. Put okay. put some he put some heels on. You're five nine. How you doing? Yes. So six up, perfect. So you want um, to look up to your man. You want to be like this. You want to get yeah. a neck ache when you go to kiss him. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. I got that. it. Yeah. So tall. Um, That's one. Yeah. Um, I don't need him to be super fit, but. To, for him to be healthy, not having okay, that, that means that, that means he doesn't have to go to the gym, but he has to eat healthy. Like what? What does that mean? That means he doesn't have to have a big a big belly. He does or he does. What is that? I'm, I'm, I'm confused. <laughs> doesn't. Oh, okay, got it. So it's healthy. There's not yeah because the, I got it. No big. I got it. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, that's two. So he's tall without a big belly. Yeah. That's the third outside thing. Um. Well, I need to feel attracted to him from uh, his... Of course you do. Yeah. Yes. That, but this is real talk. Of course you have to be attracted to him. But, you know, like, so what is it? Because like, some, um, some women like bald heads. Some women like head full of hair. Some people, I don't know. Oh, what I like guys for? with beards. Beards? Yeah. Okay. See, now that, now we got we, we got that guy. The guy's about six feet tall. He's got he doesn't have a big belly. He's got a beard. All right, you know it's funny. There's a there's a, actually a guy. Who, you described him like almost to the T. He, he's also a black guy, but he's married. But <laughs> <laughs> but he's exactly he's exactly that. All right. So what about three things on the inside? Um, very smart. Um, and when I say smart, does that mean does that mean the happiest? Uh, exactly. What does that mean? I think it's more like a smart in life. More than like I don't care somebody who has an amazing mathematical mind. That's attractive, but it's more attractive someone who has taken he's being smart to make a lot of things out of life, like having a good career or um, a great life. So it's not just it's not just degrees. You're not looking only for guys like if you don't have a master's, you can't talk to Evangelina. You know, it's not like it's not like that. No. Cool. No, it has to be more like I look. I really admire people like Tony Robbins who made a huge life without having to go to college. You know, right? He's so a good I example. Think, I don't think he has a master's in anything. Yeah, I mean, as far as formal degree is concerned. Like, look, I I do admire somebody who has degrees, but I think I admire more somebody who has doesn't have any degrees and has made a huge life. For themselves. Okay, cool. So like a, a person who, who uh, they use their mind, they make the most of what they have in their life, and they've been able to uh, to rise up. Okay, got it. Yeah. So like, uh, where it's not only ambitious, but it's um, what would be that one word? It'll come to us. All right, what else? So we got um, a smart guy. Also, a guy that family is very important for him. Like I think, uh, especially I'm Mexican, but I I usually, I mean, I sometimes I date Mexicans. Actually, I like Latin men for two reasons. 
And this is like, it doesn't have to be Latin, but I want this in a guy. What's that? Latin men are very affectionate. Okay. Um, and they also care a lot about family. Got it. So you want to be hugged, you want to be massaged, you want your feet massaged. Got it. I understand this. You want your hand held. Okay. Yeah. Um, and also great and intimacy. <laughs> Oh, is that <laughs> that that's you said that so eloquently like intimacy right? <laughs> even though I, I the energy you gave on that one it came out so much more than this intimacy is like she's like i want to be really good in bed i'll say great intimacy you know <laughs> <laughs> well um to be honest um i i i listened to this from both men and women from different places australia the u.s and mexico and um it seems that in general, it's not always the rule, but in general, Latin men and women are really, really good in intimacy. That's awesome for both of us. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> I'm, gonna put that, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go out to eHarmony. I'm gonna pay my 40 bucks a month and we'll fill up my half an hour of, uh, of, of, of uh, questions. And at the top, I'm gonna write, Evangelina said that Latin men are great in intimacy, if you know what I mean. <laughs> My lead line. We'll see where that gets me. Yes. <laughs> okay, that's great. So we know we now know that this is a smart man who's the, who's who's, who's uh, great in bed and um, wants to have a family and wants to massage your feet. One, one, one more thing. Let's see what else. Well, we I got. never thought about massaging feet. You, you made that up. This is true. I'm I'm putting <laughs> words in your mouth. I think you want a girl who wants to, uh, you you want her to massage your feet. Maybe both, like me to her, her to me. Probably that's why I said that. You're absolutely right. Yes, because I, I, I you know what it is because I'm because I'm that guy. Like you know, like yeah, you know, like some people hate feet. I'm like oh, hey, it's, it's beautiful. I massage your feet, and some people love that. That's when they pay to go to they go to the masseuse. You know, you ever see you ever go there? You watch somebody get their foot massage, their eyes are behind their head. I'm like that guy. That person looks like they're having the time of their life. I want to provide that for somebody. You know, just observing, seeing what people like. You know. I'll be saving them twenty-three dollars an hour every hour. Ya tu sabes. <laughs> so okay, but enough of mommy massaging feet. Um, <laughs> smart man, great in bed. What's that family? Um, no, actually, well, embodies Latin culture. I got that. I, I love that you said that because I am absolutely I'm absolutely gonna put that somewhere. I don't know where yet, but I'm gonna put that on there. Like I'm Latin, which means I'm great at intimacy. I'm gonna use your words. <laughs> yes. And what's one more inside characteristic of the man that you're looking for? Uh, well, I think that's, that's the three of them. So that he's really smart, loves family, and you know li likes to be affectionate and very intimate. Look at you. You're at, you're, you are right. I was trying to get a bonus one out of, out of you, but uh, you're, you're a good counter. There you go. That master's degree is coming in. <laughs> it's coming in handy right now. <laughs> well, with political economy, I need to know how to count. <laughs> this, this is true, and, and you did a very good job at counting. I, I try, I tried to trick you and get you to four, but you're just too smart for me. Um, good job, Miss Evangelina Chavez, de chica. Oh, by the way, thank you for teaching teaching me that. I did not know that because uh, in Spanish, when we say de, people get to confused with be, which is b, and ve yeah. is v. So let's make sure you understand what we're saying. You say de chica. That means v. I just learned yeah. that today because Miss Evangelina taught me. So. Um, you know, I, I, so I grew up in the United States in uh, Spanish would be my second language. So um, I'm always learning. Um, you did say that your uh, superpower is understanding legal details. Would that mean that you'd love to connect with a lawyer? Would that, would, would, would like, would, would, would Jay, that lends you like, oh my God, if you connected with a lawyer, this guy would be like, oh my gosh, she's so smart. And you would think he's so smart. Like, have you ever dated a lawyer or no? Uh, I think I love to date a lawyer, especially someone who was focused on real estate, because that's the thing, like, you know, investing in different places in the world, you, you really need to understand those different things. And I think that's one of the reasons that I've, I've been able to do this. Um, so, yeah, uh, a lawyer would be great for me, I think. Yeah, this is great. Eventually, this is all about getting clear on what is it, you know, that we want and and letting people know exactly what we, what we know, what, what we're looking for, because now... You know, someone's watching, like, yeah, look at this. This guy's like, hey, I'm a lawyer. I'm like six feet tall. I got a beard. I'm a beast in bed. This girl's going to love me. <laughs> you know? 
<laughs> this is, you yeah, know. Feel good and, to um, <laughs> would you, would, okay, so let's say that you, you, let's say that guy's watching, right? And he's got all these characteristics and he's like, oh my God, I totally love like, um, like uh, uh, I totally love Demi Moore. This is like my, my girl right here. She's younger than Demi Moore. She's hotter than Demi Moore, you know, because, but he's got children. He's got children. Is that a deal breaker? No, no. I, I highly respect the guy who has children and takes care of him, of their, of mm -hmm. his children. I do want to have more children. So um, I prefer, like I want the guy who wants more children Unless, you know, maybe maybe if he was like a single dad, you know, his wife died and he has little children he needs to take care of, I'll be also very happy to just adopt the children. That's amazing. That's great. I mean, I just, I'm, I'm, I just, I don't know if I just saw your life. Like, and I met a guy and you, know, you met this guy and he's like, he has children. Because sometimes that's a concern. You know, I have, I have uh, friends who, um, you know, they, they, have kid, they have kids and it's like, I'm not quite sure, you know, if I can give myself to a, a, a man right now because they are so focused on their kids and they're like, I don't, I don't know if that's okay with somebody. So to hear that you're open to that, I mean, that would probably be music to some guy's ears. Um, who has kids? Wow. I think, it's funny, I, I feel like I see your guy <laughs> you know, in, my, in my head. It's interesting he's got this beard though and he's a lawyer. That'd be interesting. Like imagine <laughs> a big bearded guy. Coming into the law, coming into the, uh, into, into, into the uh, courtroom, but he doesn't have to be working in a courtroom. He can work anywhere. Um, um, Mario, did I? Are you still there? Hello? Hi. Yeah, you're back. I don't know. What happened? I, don't know. I was like, wait a minute. No, where did she go? Um, anyway, I, I feel like I, I, I see your dude. You're so clear. I, I really want to thank you for um, touching on the whole masculine, feminine energy. energy. Um, I I think that there should I, I should probably... Um, can you... I don't mind going over. Like I said, we'd go half an hour, but... like. Can you, can you can you talk a little bit more about that, Matt, the masculine and the feminine energy? Like, I, I know there's polarities included in that, but could you, could you go a little deeper? Well, um, yeah. So with masculine and feminine energy, there is a need for men in general to want to protect women. And, you know, we, we sometimes think that, that. We, need to, we want to fight with each other and, you know, show that I don't need a man, you know. But in fact, women we want somebody who is going to be affectionate and take care of us and men want to take care of, of us and then Got you know it. you know when you when you're in a relationship that is working the man will do something to make you happy and then you want to make to do something to make him happy so that's right. the plurality right. where um you know you want the guy to call you and then of course he's expecting you to be um, to laugh and to listen to him, right? So that there is the polarity where he takes care of you and you show him that you like him taking care of you. So you you smile, you have a good time, and that's what men want. They want they, they want their women. I think one of the most frustrating things for men is not to be able to make their women happy. And um, even though I don't believe that your happiness relies on anybody else outside, you know, if you are just happy, then your your mind is going to feel fu fulfilled. And the same way, like mm. we also want to make our men happy, you know. So what you're saying is, if a woman allows the man to show that she's happy, she is fulfilling the. the what the, the the masculine need yes like men will like you know give you flowers or maybe maniachis you know things like that and then if you mm -hmm. appreciate that he's going to want to do more right he's going to be like he's going to have that behavior of you know i give you and then you're happy and so i give you more 
because then I make you happy. Mm -hmm. But if you act right. like, oh, well, thank you for the flowers, but I think it's bad for the environment that you, you know, kill the flowers. Got it. You don't want to want to do it again, right? Right, right. So you kind of killed his masculine energy right there because that's how he shows his love and you know, you didn't receive it. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And okay. I think okay. like, when, and, and when are we out of polarity? Like how do we, what, like how do we identify that we're out of polarity and when, what do we do about it? Well, I think sometimes like, you know, if a guy gets really angry and he yells at you because your survival instincts tells you that, you know, you're going to punch him back, right? Like, you, you mm -hmm. just stay there and you get quiet and you don't say anything, but you are angry. And because you are angry, you find a way to castrate him in a way that he cannot hurt you. So next time you are with his friends, you say something that makes him sound like he's an idiot in front of his friends. So you show him that you can control him, but he's not going to you know yell at you or hit you there because you are in a control environment. And you don't do this consciously. That is something that it has been, uh, we sort of learn from our parents. Like I remember my, I mean, my dad, he, he has some um, anger management things, but my mother was mm -hmm. really good at sort of, you know, telling him stuff that it will be like little by little by little um, annoy him. Like my dad will mm -hmm. start driving and my mother will be, be careful with that, be careful with that, be careful with that. And my father will be just like, stop and like, Okay, you drive because I'm not doing this. <laughs> you right, know, right. Women, we, we can be very castrating, um, but because we don't yell or we don't punch, then we sometimes act like we are the victims. And um, instead of realizing how sometimes we can be very castrating um, in a hidden way. Like, for example, what I used to do with this boyfriend, I thought I was, I was, you know, making sure that I was, nobody could control me. And, you know, mm -hmm. my way of, you know, putting the clothes to dry was smarter. But in fact, I was telling this guy that I was smarter and I need, I didn't need him, you know, to get stuffed. Right, right. And of course, that the, the hanging the clothes is just one example. It's not what that, it's not, that didn't make or break the relationship, but it's just one example of how you were coming out of polarity with your masculine and feminine energy. This is good stuff. Yeah. Um, have you do you feel that you've ever pushed away Mr. Right because of your uh masculine energy? Yeah, I, I think so. Like, I, I think sometimes I've did it, guys, that um, whenever I didn't feel that I was getting what I wanted. Like even with mm -hmm. this guy that I mentioned, um, but with many guys, I feel like I was like, okay, you are not going to give me what I want. I'm just going to go and get it myself. Right, right. Wow. And just to, to, to wrap up here, because I, as I know that you you know you've obviously done a lot of work for personal development, and you are you are in harmony. Is there anything else that you're doing now? Because you understand that um, in order for things to change, we've got to change. Right. Well, at the, at the moment, I'm listening to Joe Dispenza. Do you know Joe Dispenza? Yes, doing a lot of good work out there. Yeah, so especially I'm especially now during the quarantine. He's like, I feel like he's doubling down. I see more of his work now than ever. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm doing some of his work because I I realize that there's some programming in me that is not mm -hmm. is not getting. Look, when I with everything that I achieve in life, I always look mm -hmm. for models, for people who have done what I couldn't do before. Right. And I, I just I, I just um, learned what I needed to do. Um, with this one, I think it's a little bit more tricky, but I'm, I keep on looking for different ways to change the conditioning and the wiring that I have in my head, because right now, as you said, there's no there's no real reason why I should be single. Okay, and the, and the reason why you are single is because. Well, that conditioning that I have in my head that I am I'm I'm, right. I'm aware of it, but I'm still haven't been able to break it. So at right. the moment, I am I'm doing a course with Joe, Joe Dispenza to learn how to use meditation. Um, to make that change in the back of my head where I can just, 
enjoy men and allow them to protect me without feeling like they want to control me. Wow, it's, it's simple words, but it's so profound. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And um, I guess I need to go check out some more Joe Dispenza. I, I, I see him pop up on, on YouTube and um, yeah, I got to go I'll do some more research. I'll, I'll, I'll do that after this. I go listen to a Joe Dispenza video after this. I actually click on it because I see him on my feed, but uh, having the, I can't say I clicked on all his stuff. Um, that's amazing. So, okay. So if a guy is looking for you, they can find you to wrap up. They can find you on, on Bumble, but better probably find you on eHarmony, right? Yes. And that's so, it? No other you know, dating apps? They they can reach me through my Facebook as well. If <laughs> Right. Hey, why not? It's, it's been scrolling the whole time. I mean, I mean, and this is about, this is, I mean, we're being, we're being serious here, right? Like this is what you want. So, you know, we, we, we attract, you know, we, we, we attract what we want in life. Right. And we, we talk about it, you put it out there and um, it's not, it's not like you're um, trying to play games. You got, you got an awesome life and you want to share it. So I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate your honesty. I appreciate you talking about uh, masculine feminine energy and introducing us to uh, the work that you're doing as far as uh, Tony Robbins and now Joe Dispenza. Um, I hope that, do you have a do you have a timeline on next? Do you have a time like hey in, in a year I'd like to be or in five years I'd like to be? Do you have anything like that or or? No? Well, I mean, I'd love to meet the guy of my dream next week. That would be really good. Next um, week, sure. One more day weekend, sure. Why not? <laughs> I'm sure the quarantine's helping you out with that, but you got any harmony, so you know, and the world is your oyster. Yeah. So. I went, I went, are you guys in like? Cause I'm in New York, and we're like in, in like still in lockdown. Are you in lockdown over there? And uh, it in is. Tough, tough, well, they tough. opened up already. Uh, a lot of things are closed down, but you are free to go anywhere. Um, it's just like restaurants are closed down. Um, I believe that in Mexico City they won't open until the 15th of June, but I don't do it. I'm behaving, but if you just want to go to your friend's house in Mexico City, there's no problem for you to do that. So it is okay. a point being you can still go, you can still go on a date if you want to. That's why I'm asking. You can still be oh, okay, yes. meet me out here. Okay, cool. Yes. Fantastic. Well, that's all I've got. This has been awesome talking to you. Uh, you've inspired me to do some more research. And um, I look forward to seeing you at another Tony event. And we don't know when that'll happen, but maybe we'll, you know, we should uh, get a group get a group in and create our own, if you know what I'm saying. Sounds good. Uh, fantastic. Evangelina, check her out on Facebook. Bumble, most likely see her on eHarmony. Pasa fuera. Can you say pasa fuera? Pasa fuera. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Did you say pasa fuera or pasa fuera? Pas afuera. No pasa afuera. That too sounds, yes. There you go. Okay, I'm sure that means a lot of you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Bye.